Well, good afternoon, folks. So I want to do a video today about iron cylinder heads versus aluminum cylinder heads. Um, this used to be a big topic when aluminum cylinder heads first came out in the market and people were using them to build their old engine, the V8 engine specifically. And there's a big decision you have to make. And now that the aluminum cylinder heads have really flooded the market over the past couple of decades, it's really not a topic that you hear about as much. But in my world, and a lot of you folks out there that have muscle cars, it's still a decision to make. So the decision is when to have, when to buy aluminum cylinder heads, when to use your iron cylinder heads, and what is the budget. The budget is the number one thing, obviously. However, there are all kinds of factors that take place of when and when not to use iron cylinder heads. So let's start with what the target horsepower is on a given engine. You know, your 350 Chevys, there's so many of them, small block Chevys that, I mean, the, the aluminum cylinder heads are so cheap that it's a no-brainer. You just use an aluminum cylinder head. However, on a engine that's not near as prevalent, like say an uh, Oldsmobile, uh, uh, maybe a Pontiac, some of your Mopars maybe, um, that you kind of don't have that many choices on, a, on an aluminum cylinder head, or it's really expensive for an aluminum cylinder head on some of those engines. So what's the target goal? Well, is it a street car? If it's not a street car, do you have to run on pump gas? That's a, one of the first things, gotta run on pump gas. Okay, so we wanna give a, build a, an engine with a given horsepower with um, aluminum or iron cylinder heads. Can we get there? So let's say you wanna build a 500 horsepower uh, traditional V8 and it's gonna be stroked perhaps if it's a small block to hit that target most likely to still be on the street so you're going to build a you're going to build you a stroker well an aluminum cylinder head gets you there really easy with a stroker small block chevy ford mopar it's really easy to get there with an aluminum cylinder head but let's say that you can't really afford an aluminum cylinder head you got to stick with iron but it's got to be pump gas friendly well, there's certain things you can do. Um, this engine has iron cylinder heads and it has the good cylinder heads. I believe they're J heads. These came, these are your early 340 heads. They came with 202 valves. They got good runners in them. And these engines went anywhere from 275 horse to I think uh, maybe 300 and something. They were way underrated, but they made great power for what they were. And they ran on really good fuel back in the day. So a lot of these engines, when they were new back in the 60s, they had what they called ethyl fuel. Ethyl was a premium fuel and it had lead in it. So detonation wasn't a problem. You could run 10 and a half to one compression on a iron cylinder head, and you were fine. You, you had ethyl. Well, nowadays we got crappy ethanol fuel. I'm sorry, it's just, it sucks. <laughs> for my world, but um, 92, 93 in some places, 91 octane. So you got to make the decision, well, I'm gonna have to decide, I'm not gonna be able to make the horsepower I want with an iron cylinder head because um, of detonation. With an aluminum head cylinder head, you can usually get away, at least what I've seen, it, there's way more um, factors in this than me just saying a static compression ratio. Dynamic compression comes into play, and that's your cam camshaft selection. But let's get back to the iron cylinder head versus the aluminum cylinder head, and not go down the rabbit hole yet of camshaft selection. Well, let's say you got a, a 351 Cleveland. Good engine. Um, you wanna run a good cylinder head on that engine though. So let's say you've got a, a 351 Cleveland 4V, but with the closed chamber. That engine probably would have had 10 and a half uh, compression to it. And they still had some decent fuel. So 
you could probably get away with building a 351 Cleveland with 4V closed chamber heads. Um, if you stroke it, you got to really be careful camshaft selection. But um, you could build it with the right pistons back to a, say a nine and a half to one, be pump gas friendly, and you still have a lot of power out of that engine. We did build a 351 Cleveland 4V with the iron uh, cylinder heads, and it was a 408 Cleveland, and it made tons of power. So you can still build these engines with iron cylinder heads, but your machine shop, nine times out of 10, is gonna say, you know, we don't even mess with porting the iron cylinder heads anymore. I'd say at least 60% of them will say that. The reason being is obviously iron is much harder than aluminum. So it takes much longer and it takes more wear and puts more wear and tear on their mill because it's a harder surface. So it's a lot more labor intensive than doing a set of aluminum cylinder heads. So is it in the budget? Well, we're building a, uh, for instance, we're building a 350 Pontiac Stroker. Now that engine to achieve the horsepower that he wanted to achieve and the head iron cylinder head selection that we had for the 350 small block, there weren't a lot of choices. And he did make room in the budget. He said, I'm gonna to have to run an Edelbrock cylinder head. So that's what he chose. So we went with an Edelbrock cylinder head for that. But let's say you're building a, a small block Chevy, you can get a set of aluminum cylinder heads for that engine for 800 bucks, and then you can mill them, do all kinds of things you wanna do. That's, a, that's basically the, the, the truth of running a Chevy. It's just so much cheaper because there's, there's so many more of them. So really it's kind of a no brainer unless this is a, a numbers matching concourse restoration. So now that gets into another can of worms or another discussion. So let's say that you have a, a, um, a factory numbers matching um, 69 Hearst Olds 442. You say, hey man, I, this thing's all numbers matching, but I really want you know, 550 horsepower out of this thing. Well, that's really not the car to do it with. You wouldn't take a Holy Grail car like that and stick an aluminum cylinder head on a numbers matching 69 442. Just like you wouldn't take a numbers matching A12 446 pack, um, everything original, you wouldn't go sticking an indie head on something like that because then you're going to ruin the originality of the engine of the car and then you're going to diminish the value of it. So there's certain factors that take place. So you bring me a you bring me a um, uh, Camaro and you got it came with a 283 or 350 and it's just a regular old, you know, run of the day Camaro. We'll build a stroker. We'll put a set of aluminum, a good set of aluminum cylinder heads. Hey, can you run AFR? Probably all kinds of cylinder heads that aren't near as expensive. It's kind of a no-brainer there. But let's say you're running a Yinko Camaro. It's all numbers matching. It's all original. You know, I'm going to tell you, I, I'm not going to be the guy that's going to take a factory Yinko Camaro and go stick an aluminum cylinder head on it because that's another Holy Grail car. I'm not going to take a 69 charge or a 70 Hemi Cuda and stick an aluminum cylinder head on it if it's all original and it's a numbers matching car. So that's where we're at on that. Um, you know, if you want to run your car, then that you, you go ahead and run your car and you do that. I'm not your guy. But back to building, let's say this car here, this is a, an original 340 dart high performance car um, it was originally an automatic we did change it to a four speed that's what the customer wanted but um, this is not the original engine but he is he did want to keep it as factory appearing as possible so we had the cylinder heads bowl ported we had a five angle valve job done to them and they probably flow pretty good for what they are so this engine stroked and it should run really really well it's going to run so well that these stupid tires aren't going to able to hold the engine there's no way so that was a decision he still spent a lot of money on the heads but it kept him in his budget now that's another thing you've got to figure is 
how many head selections are there in the aluminum head world for your particular engine? Let's say you're running a Pontiac. Pontiacs have a lot of cylinder head choices. And if it's not an original, numbers matching type of car, then you can go hog wild, build a 455 aluminum headed stroked engine for a, a GTO or a Le Mans or Bonneville, whatever it may be. Let's say uh, it's a Fairlane and you, you want to build a 428 and it's an FE. So FE engines, they're big cylinder heads. There's a lot of iron there. And most machine shops are going to tell you, unless it's a, a factory uh, high riser um, with the big high performance heads, they're going to tell you to go get a set of aluminum cylinder heads because they don't want to sit there and port something and spend all that time. And you're not going to want to spend all that time and money and to get really mediocre results when you could have bought a set of trick flow heads that flow. But I mean, there's, it's their superior head to the factory head. So those are some of the decisions to make on iron versus, versus the aluminum budget, horsepower goal, and, um, what's applicable. And another thing is to be honest, you know, everybody wants the most amount of horsepower possible and I get it. I'm a horsepower guy, but you also want it to be reliable if it's a street car, if it's a drag car, hell no, it's, it's <laughs> all bets are off. But if it's a street car, we got to have vacuum. Now then you got to take that into consideration and you're going to, you're going to be set into a set of parameters of, 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 options on a cam to keep that vacuum and if it's an automatic to run a, a reasonable size converter for the street. So you gotta, you've got to have these goals and then build that engine with your engine builder or whoever or you and get those, get those discussions laid out there and you got to hit a target. And then another thing is don't change your mind in the middle of a project. You know, if, if he wanted to this customer here, if all of a sudden he wanted 550 horsepower and um, he wanted, uh, you know, roller cam, and well then now it's just a whole different ball of wax and everything's got to come back apart. So again, iron cylinder heads versus aluminum cylinder heads, there's still reasons to run iron cylinder heads and you can still get good power out of them. Doesn't matter, Chevy, Ford, Mopar, AMC, whatever. It's still, you still have those choices. Um, you just got to know what your budget is and what your reasonable amount of horsepower is. This, this car here with 375 horsepower would be an animal. It's going to have more than that, but it's, it's really, you know, you, how enjoyable do you want the car to be? So anyway, it was just a quick overview. Not a lot here, but I did want to discuss aluminum versus iron cylinder heads and the cost of, of each. So don't throw those iron cylinder heads away if they're, if there's something that, um, that you think that you need to change your mind on a budget or they may, they may fit your needs. So hope everybody got, hope everybody got something out of this. Um,